Hello, everyone. I was talking with someone the other day about um, the potential of doing some work with her and her organization. And as I was talking to her, one of the things that I that I that sort of occurred to me was one of the things I think we do pretty well is we help people to figure out whether we can help. <laughs> okay, and what I mean by that is, um, you know, getting things done solves some very specific problems. It solves a lot of them. Don't get me wrong. It's a very, it's a very, uh, you know, the comprehensive nature of getting things done, I think, means that it can solve a lot of different types of problems. But what I thought might be helpful for, for this uh, video blog today was to present you with some thoughts about what might you be experiencing or you might be observing about your own ways of working, which would indicate that, again, getting things done, the GTD methodology could help. And what might you be observing that might be going on in your team that would be an indication that, yeah, actually getting things done could help. So let's let's start with you. Let's start with the things that you might be experiencing. So one possibility is you're distracted, okay? You find it hard to focus. You find it hard to sort of stay, stay on point. Um, and getting things done, we'll look at that from a number of different angles, right? Um, you know, one of the things that we find is that an awful lot of people are distracted because they're using their their minds, their brains, to hold on to details. Um, and and again, those of you who know GTD know that that's one of the things that we will address. But there are other possibilities as well when it comes to distraction. You know, uh, is it about your work environment? Is it about the settings and the various uh, you know um, collaboration apps that you've got, and and should those be optimized? You know. So distraction might be might be something um, that we could help with. Second possibility, you have the sense that you can't shut off, right? You are, and this is sort of a cousin, uh, an evil cousin of distraction, right? So you find yourself uh, in the evenings, at the weekends, you know, when you have chosen not to be focused on work, you find yourself being distracted about thoughts about work, okay? And again, that's something that GTD uh, addresses very directly. And and in our, you know, post-pandemic um, age where there's more going on, people are working from home more often in most countries, um, and the the lines are blurred a bit between, you know, when when am I at work and when I when am I not? Um, not being able to shut off is something that we're hearing more about from more people. And the third possibility, I guess I'd just say, is that, that you're curious, right? You're, you know, maybe you're saying to yourself, look, I'm, I'm, I'm quite successful. I've, I've, you know, professionally, personally, I think things are going really well. But you might say, but, you know, I've heard a lot about this getting things done methodology, you know, maybe from colleagues, maybe from friends, whatever. And I'm just wondering, you know, what's the fuss about? What, what is this? It, it seems to have resonated with a lot of people. How might it help me? So that could be two. You know, you just have a sense that, hey, I'm, I'm curious. How could GTD help? And then I'll add one more to the list of things that, you know, would help you as, a, uh, as an individual. If you find that you're, uh, you're overwhelmed, you've just got the sense that you've got too much on. Now, our solution for that, you know, there are a number of ways to look at that, really. It might have to do with your ways of working. Right, that your ways of working, if they were more efficient, you'd feel like you were getting more done, and therefore that wouldn't be such an issue. It could come down to the fact that your your roles, you know, your ongoing responsibilities are too broadly defined, and you just have, quite frankly, you have too much on because you have um, too many plates to spin. That could be. Um, so again, if you've got a sense that you're that you're overwhelmed, then that could well be, um, you know, something that's a trigger. Uh, to you know, to get in touch with us and and let us help you. And now let's turn to the other category of things here: the things that might be going on in your team that would indicate that we could help. That the getting things done methodology might help you. And just to be clear, you know, GTD. A lot of people think of GTD as an individual thing, right? It's about it's about optimizing my own ways of working, enabling stress-free productivity for me. And of course, it is that. But over the years, we've worked with hundreds, maybe thousands of, of teams to help them to work more effectively. So GTD is not just for you as an individual. 
So let's talk about what might be going on in your team that would be an indication that GTD could help. One is I'll just put in a, in a big basket called lack of clarity. It's not really clear who's responsible for what, okay? That could manifest itself in people realizing that they're, that they're overlapping, that they're solving the same problem as other people. It could um, manifest itself in, you know, people walking out of, people walking out of meetings, you know, team meetings and going, uh, we talked about a lot of stuff there, but I'm not quite sure. Did he take that project? Did I have responsibility for that? Whose is that? Okay. So lack of clarity about who's doing what. And, the, and the, by the way, the who's doing what could be at the level of, of you know, a, a particular project, something that some sort of outcome that, that that's being worked on in the team. Or it could be lack of clarity about some sort of ongoing responsibility, right? Budgeting, marketing, um, succession planning, right? One of these things where it's an ongoing responsibility and it's not really clear who's got it, who's responsible for it. So that's one thing, lack of clarity. Another thing is delegation, okay? Delegation is something that we see a lot in the work that we do. Um, that, well, let me put it this way. There's a lot of unclear delegation that's going on out there. There's, there are a lot of people who are not really um, implementing good ways of delegating and implementing good ways of receiving delegation and then keeping track of what has been delegated. And before, before I go too far with this, let, let me just pause for a minute. When I say delegation, I'm not necessarily meaning that you as an individual are giving, let's say you're delegating, you're giving it to somebody who works for you. That, that of course, is delegation, right? If somebody works for you and you ask them to do something, that is a form of delegation. But delegation in the way that we use the word uh, means you could give something to the boss to do, right? You, you ask the boss, hey, boss, can I get approval for these holiday days, right? And you're waiting for the boss to get back to you on that. That would be an example of, of upward delegation. Okay, so delegation in the way that we use the word really just means I'm giving it to somebody else to do. Okay. Um, so in getting things done, one of the things that we talk about is how can I be clear, I as the person who's delegating, let's say, and also the person who's receiving the delegation, how can we both be clear what's been delegated, right? Is it something tactical? Are you asking me to send you a document? Right. In which case, it's probably fairly straightforward, you know, and and the outcome of that is, hey, you sent me the document. It's all done. But it could be something that's been delegated that's that's, you know, more that that's that's larger scale. Right. Could be a project. And in that case, are you really clear what done looks like? Right. So what does what does the completion state for that look like? How will I know when this delegated project is complete? And then finally, and this is interesting because this is coming up more and more in our conversations just in the last couple of months. There's something in the air <laughs> in our marketplaces, which is the use of tools. And when I, when I say tools, what I mean by that is shared tools, collaborative tools. We're getting a lot of teams coming to us asking the question, how can we be sure that we're using the tool set that we have to best effect? And, and what seems to have happened in a lot of teams is that the tools were rolled out without any sort of support, you know, for deciding how are these tools going to be used? What are we going to keep there? How do the tools relate to each other? If something, you know, let's let's imagine for the moment that I have that I've got an email of some form, but I've also got a messaging platform of some, you know, some form, Microsoft Teams or something similar. Um, when do I use what? Right. If I've got some sort of a shared repository uh, for, you know, for things, where do things get kept? Right. So and, and what we find is that when those things are not clear, it generates stress. Right. People are using uh, people are using channels which are inefficient or ineffective or rub people the wrong way. Right. Um, and in many cases, um, I just had a conversation last week with a client who said, you know, she mentioned one of the tools that they were using in their organization. And she said, I got so fed up with it, I've just stopped using it, right? So again, the issue that might be, uh, um, uh, you know, apparent or, or you might have a sense that uh, you've got in your team is that your 
um, your tool sets, you either don't have the right tools or maybe you've got the right tools, but they're just not being used effectively. So I hope that was helpful. As always, please do let us know if there's anything else that we can do to help you in your journey to stress-free productivity. Um, if you'd like to hear more, please do like and subscribe. Um, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.